I'm here to do a story about the town of Gonora, North Dakota, where things are really starting to pop. It was difficult living out here, especially in the wintertime. Prairie, as far as the eye can see, Gonora, North Dakota. And that town is growing and things are happening. And we're going to have a video about that as soon as I can get it put together. Wonderful things are happening in this small town. You won't believe some of the parties they have. Fantastic. The wind always blows here. Always blows. This year is no, no exception. In fact, it's probably worse. This is June 17th, and it was 40 degrees last night in my RV camp. Well, not inside. I had the heat on, but it was 40 degrees outside. It was cold, and it'll be the same tonight. Hi, my name is Brett Wilkins, and I'm the mayor of Granora, North Dakota, and I'd like to welcome you to our community. I'd like to inform you about a few changes here in Granora over the last few years. We have been uh, updating all of our plumbing and water and sewer paving. We have uh, put in about $15 million, close to $15 million worth of infrastructure and uh, upgrades over the last six to eight years. City Hall, new City Hall Public Works Department. We also have a beautiful new fire department uh, that is, I think, about two million, two million plus dollars. In addition to everything that I've talked about, we also have a wonderful, wonderful ambulance service and brand new optic fiber in the last two years. We've also redone our water tank in the last year. We completely redid that. Most of the infrastructure here was put in in 1938 and hadn't been touched and or uh, redone in probably almost 100 years. So in the last eight years, we've done everything I've talked about and more. Also in Granora, we have many social activities, wonderful people. At our 100th anniversary, just a few short years ago, we had over 3,000 people here in town and over about 100% uh, plus of our population. Uh, we had Sawyer Brown. We had concerts, venues downtown, parades, and all kinds of uh, quite extravagant. We had people from all over, even different states came. It was a wonderful, wonderful event. I see that Kenora was founded in what date? Those in 1916. 1916, that's why they see the posters up there. Yeah. What was it before? Empty or just a few scattered houses? There was nothing here until 1916. They say that it's one of the fastest towns in the country. To... What do you mean by fastest growing? Yep, okay. fastest growing. It was put up in a very short period of time because it was the end of the railroad. Oh, that's Tracks the reason. Burlington, or Great Northern Railroad. Th this was the end of their run was Granora. And when they brought the railroad this far, um, and they knew this was going to be the end of the run, Granora just kind of sprang up overnight. From tents to houses. Say. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. They had a passenger train that would come to Granora. Come to this destination yeah. as far as they go. Yeah. Passengers. So yeah. what did they come here for? Curiosity? Nothing was here at the time. Um, because they homesteaded. There were a lot of homesteaders here. Oh, that's right. Here, that's the law of stone effect. Yeah. yeah. Then my own. They were given so many acres of land if they would come and homestead and, you know, if they stayed there so long, then, then it was... Wasn't, wasn't it a five-year thing? I don't remember, I think so. I mean, I obviously, I wasn't there then, but... No, it was... Um, yeah. And Granora is named after the Great Northern Railroad. Did you know that? No, I did not. Okay. Look at the sign. G-R-E, then N-O-R, or N-O, and then R-A. Grant nor Ra. You see it? Got it. No, I never would have known that. Yep, that's what it's we're like, doing. It's like a trick question. It is. <laughs> you don't it know It is. That. Everybody from here knows it. Well, yeah. I mean, now everybody will know it. Yep, that's what we're named after. So the town started to grow because the tracks ended here. Yep. But there couldn't have been a lot. There couldn't have been a lot of passengers. Why would they come here? Curiosity or they? Um. Central Point. I don't know. Well, know. weren't the farms small at that yes, time? Yes, very so, small. So, so there were a lot of them. A lot of farm families. A lot family. of farmers, yep. And a lot of kids. Yep. And then that started to die out, what, in the mm -hmm. 90s? 
No, before that, in probably the 70s, it started really declining. Is that because the farms got so big and there was less family? Yeah. Families got smaller, for one thing. Okay. People don't have 12, 14 kids. Yeah. Well, they are again now, some of them, but um, the families got smaller and the farms got bigger. And then they started the CRP program where they put... They took farmland out and and planted it um, and just oh. kind of let it go back to it being wild. Wild grass. Yes, and they put thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of farmland yeah. into that. They, they, they got paid for it. They got paid for it. And you didn't have to do any work. Right. Well, I think I would have done the same thing. Well, yeah, if you had poor land, it was a good yeah. way to... Yeah. To get some money for it, but I know farmers that put their whole farm into it, and then they took the money and moved away. You know, <laughs> but they still, they still own the land, though. Yep, yep. The town started to decay slowly. Mm -hmm. Oil came, and now it's exploding the other direction. Yes, the town is cosmetically beautiful to look at. People are moving in town. Yes, uh, and I, I guess the oil companies, oil business, is bringing them here. Yes, yes. Definitely. I'm hearing one family said we came because of the oil, and the oil stopped, mm -hmm. whatever it was. But we're not going to go anyplace. They liked it so much. Yep. Good place for kids to grow up. Yeah, we get a lot of that. Once they get here, they fall in love with the community, and they buy a kids home, and they run, stay here. Kids mm -hmm. can run all over town, you know, it's a small yeah. town. And we have an excellent school system, very good school system. Now, didn't you add on to that? Yes. They put over a nine million dollar addition. How much? Nine million, over wow. nine million. Uh, they put that on in 2016, 2015 and 16. And uh, yeah, the school is fantastic. Just very up to date. It's got all of the, everything you could need for the modern teaching, you know, for kids. So it's great. It's is, a wonderful is, is the principal school. on during the summertime? Yep. Over? I'll, I'll the chase superintendent, that. yes. I'll, I'll, chase, yes. The, I'll chase that down later. Yes, yes, you well, should now, see that. When you go to hire right. teachers, because of the location, I assume the teachers are the first students out of college. No, not no? always. Huh? Not always, okay. No, no, not always. What attracts them, do they say? What, why? Um, well, I don't know. I don't really talk yeah. to the teachers, so that'd be a good thing to ask the superintendent. Yeah. I don't know. There was one staying in my uncle's house in town here. Yes. And then she got married to somebody local yes. and took off yes. or whatever. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, I see, yeah, I, I see great things happening. This is exciting to be able to do a video about Kenora coming from the past to today, and now things are starting to mushroom and blossom. Yeah. And the great, uh, this is exciting. It is. It is yeah. very exciting. The oil has been wonderful to Granora. Now, I'm hearing that a lot of wells have been capped for a while because yeah. of the low yeah. prices. They've been shut down, yeah, because of the low prices. So that is impacting us tremendously yeah. as yeah. far as income. Well, that's going to change. But it'll come back. It always comes back. So. Uh, did you say there's a well just north of town about five miles? Yeah, less than five miles, of okay. about three miles, yeah. Wow! This is some big machine. Where'd you get, where'd you get your training? Uh, I just started. I mean, I didn't have to, I didn't have any training. I just jumped in one. He just jumped in. Yep. Oh my gosh. I've been going for about almost eight years now, so. One. I hope the sound carries because the engine's pretty loud. Yeah, it is. Well, I I admire you for doing this. Thank you. Okay. That little girl drives this whole thing. Don, thank you for taking the time to come here to the Senior Citizen Center here in Granora. Everybody I talk to says, if I need answers about the history, you're the one to be doing this. And I'm, I'm nervous that I don't have the right questions to ask. First of all, where are you from? Are you from Good Granora? Yep, I grew up here and uh, lived here through high school and then I I went on to have a career in telecommunications for 35 years and then came back. Telecommunications, the yep. technical end of things or what? Uh, no, more so in the administration and okay. management, yeah. 
Okay, so you were born here, born born in Williston, raised here. Oh, raised. Yes. Okay, born in Williston and raised here. Yes. Well, then you know a lot about the town. I understand. I missed a really great party with with 100th year celebration. They really put together a nice party in, in 2016. Yes. Uh, uh, the party part of it and the history part of it, uh, I think, was very well observed. Super. Well, I've got some tapes. I hope some of that is on there. Uh, I have family who had property north of town and so forth, but everything's changed. I see terrific things happening, new buildings, new, new houses, new... I guess, what brought the boom? Oil? Yeah, oil was the big thing, although uh, oil has slowed down and our school population still remains about the same from when it grew because of oil. So we, we still have some jobs here that are related to oil for the production end of things. So even though they're not drilling as much, they're still uh, doing the maintenance on the rigs and, and hauling uh, the product around. So there's still jobs out here, but Grenoir never really was... Uh, impacted as much as areas just 40 and 50 and 100 miles away. We were kind of on the edge of it. Yeah, when, when Granora started, uh, my goodness, you had uh, farms that were no more than uh, two or three quarters and large families, as you say. And what made Granora so vibrant was not just the people living in town here, but the many farmers out in the country that came in to conduct their business here in Granora. So we, we had... Uh, a large population base many years ago that has that has reduced now. I'm seeing exciting things happening here. New houses, new buildings. City Hall was immaculate. Yes. Is that the oil money helping the town out or other sources? Well, oil has been a big source of a lot of the improvements made here. The City Hall is one of them. The, the streets actually uh, the plan is over the next years is that oil is going to fund uh, our loan that has paid for these streets and new water and sewer. Uh, our, our property taxes are quite low in Granora, but yet uh, because of uh, impacts from oil and uh, a, a sales tax, uh, it's, it's helped fund in that way. So property taxes are very manageable here. Just talking to Jane today, and I became aware of something new called the penny tax voted on. Yes. I could not believe the revenue one penny was able to raise. Yes, and you know that penny isn't just raised from the cash register sales in town here. It all uh, includes uh, the products that are used and sold for the production of oil too. So it's more than just what is conducted on Main Street, but uh, Main Street is, is part of what helps with that. Yes. How do you get a teacher to come here <clears throat> way out in the middle of nowhere, so to speak, unless they're right out of college and don't take anything. <laughs> well, we had a number of teachers at the time that were native to Granora, so they, they made it their lifelong home, and so we had those teachers. Uh, but uh, a lot of times we just get new teachers fresh out of college, and some of them really take to Granora, and they've been here a number of years now. How much money was put into the school? Well, uh, the original school, or I should say our second school, uh, that was built in 1968, um, that was built for about 650000 in 1968. This addition that we have now to, this, to that existing school was just over $9 million. That was addition to the school and then some improvements, improvements to the original part of the school. This was a decision made based on the number of kids in school and anticipated number of kids coming? Yes, I, I'm not part of the school system to know exactly, but they do have a long uh, range plan that they do that the, the state board helps, helps with. And uh, based on that long range plan, they saw the need for uh, additional facility and, uh, and the voters uh, voted for it. Well, to facilitate the fun part of Granora, the 100th year reunion I heard was fantastic and I missed it. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, I, I, From what I understand, we had uh, well over 2,000 people here uh, for three days to celebrate. Where, the, where did they stay? Yeah. Well, there were a lot of campers in town. Uh, some drove back and forth to Williston, uh, stayed in motels there, and uh, others stayed with family that's still here in Granora. So, yeah, hmm. we, 
we fit them all. Well, when I look at the website, it looks like one heck of a great party when I see some of the pictures on there. Yeah, I mean, we one of the toppers was we had the Sawyer Brown here, uh, did a concert in our baseball park, a uh, large crowd for that. Uh, we had a hypnotist here. Uh, we had a couple of large uh, dining events right on the street here that are what local. What kind of events? Dining. Uh, oh, oh dining, uh, okay. Food events that our, yeah. our local people put together. Yeah, it, it's amazing how the people come together here to volunteer to put a party together. Well, I was here for the class reunion, but I don't remember what year it was. I'm looking for the video. Sandra Olson was one of the people in charge, and so was um, the lady at... Uh, Novell Kiefer. Yeah, Novell mm -hmm. Kiefer. I got some videotapes from her I'm going to copy, yeah. and I'll send her the tapes back, and I'll send her a flash drive with all her video digitized. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, yeah, we don't want to lose that history. Keep it fresh. Keep it on our website, hopefully. And well, what I put together will be for the website. It'll be on YouTube. Uh, but the raw footage, flash drive, give it to the kids at school. Sure. To have to let them put it together. Uh, yeah, I'd like I'd like to think that a history class uh, could include history of our immediate area. We learn about our country and our world, but uh, what's happening and what has happened in in our past right here at home. The history from the older generation that we're going to meet here on Friday is probably going to be personal experiences and not so much history of Kenora itself. I would say personal experiences. Uh, if, if our one fellow, Oscar Corney, is able to come, uh, he'll talk about the implement dealership he was involved with and his, his dad's and uncle's uh, Ford dealership, which was a, a rock-solid uh, anchor business here in Granora for many years so and he can tell you about other areas around Granora that developed uh, the businesses. Uh, Corny Brothers Ford was up here but it was back in Zoll before that and even in Stady, uh, the town of Stady which is now just a farm site, uh, even even there Corny Brothers had a business. So, and that was all due because of all the small farms and all the people. Yeah. Now the farms are so big how does one, some places out in eastern North Dakota, the farms are so big they have, the people who own the farms hire managers oh, yes. to take care of it. Yeah, you, you're you seeing less and less, uh, I'd say, the, the family concept. You still have family farms here, but so many of these farmers have to hire in others to come in and help them, so you don't necessarily have the the family farming like they used to, dad and the son and the, hmm. the girls. It's, it's hired hands that are needed now for the large scale operation. Yeah. Well, I want the era to come back that was in the 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. but that's not gonna be. I don't think so. So no. we have to make the best of what's coming, but Kenora seems to be step by step building and getting bigger and better. It, you know, when you look at the other towns in the areas that, that have had their challenges and are frankly dying. Uh, Granora has managed to stay fairly strong relatively and so we we don't have the dress shops, we don't have some of those businesses that, well even even the larger towns of, of 15, 20,000, they've lost uh, their clothing stores and other type stores because of online shopping and that type of thing. So I think for a small town that what we've survived in 100, over 100 years, we're pretty strong here. We've got uh, our very core businesses. We've got new streets, new water and sewer. We've got uh, uh, community halls. We've got uh, about half a dozen places we can meet to have a party in this town. Well, so, speaking of parties, are there any more large events on the agenda coming up I should know about? Yeah, Who's no, I'm not aware of anything coming up just yet, but you know, we, we back in 66, we had our 50th, we had a 75th, we had a Y2K party, huh. we had a 90th anniversary, we had our 100th, so we like to put our parties together. Well, it sounds like par a party town, <laughs> and it's the place to be. We're a friendly town, and you know, just to the northwest or northeast of here, we have Riding Rock, which has yep. got its own history too. And 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 when you travel the countryside, uh, especially in a green springtime, it it's mm. beautiful out here. We got the rolling hills and and the valleys, and 
If we have a good year of uh, crops, uh, just to see those crops waving in the field. Uh, you know, I used to think because you're out in the prairie, there's not much water. I talked to one farmer who couldn't shut the water off. He well, said they had to fill it with concrete to cut because the water kept flowing and flooding out the fields. Oh well, yes, we've had artesian wells. Yep. Uh, and yeah, last year we had too much water. Uh, this year we're hoping for more. So. Too much in the form of rain? Well, we had very nice crops during the summer, just the right amount of rain. And then in the fall it rained and rained oh. and eventually turned to snow. And you might have heard some conversation earlier today where they were still combining this spring what they should have combined last August. Well, they had the sugar beet problem out in west, eastern North Dakota. Yep. Yes. Same factor. Same issues, different crop. Yep. From what I'm seeing around town, this looks like a railroad town. And the railroad ends here. Why did they come here in the first place? Well, my understanding is, of course, I wasn't around then, but uh, the railroads, all of the railroads, grew in increments. And my understanding is the railroad went as far as Minot and then over to Williston, but then it branched out from, from Minot to all these various towns. As I understand, it went as far as Stanley for a while, and then a few years later the railroad saw potential for growth. They built the railroad then further out to Wild Rose. Now Wild Rose, uh, they stopped there for a few years and then saw potential in this area to expand the line from Wild Rose to Granora. And Granora, I think, was possibly the end of the line because there were other railroads out in Montana that, that were ending east. So Granora was kind of the end of the line. We were a spur line, but uh, when the railroad did come here, Boy, the people saw that as that is potential for great growth because the railroad is going to yep. change everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, before then it was uh, the cart and horses to get things around. Oh, the railroad carried something. It must have been grain. It carried grain, but, uh, well, the house I live in is probably a good example. The house, uh, my parents' house that I live in is located on Block 1, Lot 1. So I'm thinking it's one of the first houses. And when I tore up some floorboards uh, five, six years ago, the back of the floorboards said, Granora Lumber Company, El Cable, North Dakota. I did some research about that. Granora, in its very beginnings, was started before the railroad finished its line here. It depended on the lumber yard 20 miles away because that little town had a railroad line. So the, the lumber got as far as El Cabo, and then it was carted down here by uh, horse and buggy, or horse and, uh, and wagon. wagon. And, and now that town that Granora depended on so much in the very early years, that town is a ghost town. So you know, you never know, uh, back then El Cabo was bigger than Granora, now it's a ghost town. Because of the railroad. Yeah. I'm Nancy. Welcome to Granora. Hi, I'm Kay, and this is my hometown of Granora, and I love it. Welcome to Granora. I'm Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Dad told a story of when he was a teenager back in the late 30s that uh, the farmers had nothing to do in this area. The crops weren't growing dry. So their dedication to this area church of St. Boniface, they decided to build a grotto and they piled up the dirt behind us, uh, did some fancy rock work, and the neighbors here built this grotto uh, as a uh, tribute to the prairie. And uh, a lot of the area farmers, some of the names still exist, some have gone away, we, we don't know anything of them anymore, but a lot of history here with the pioneers building uh, the grotto for St. Boniface Church. Sometimes I wonder if I had grown up here on the prairie instead of eastern North Dakota, would I have been a different person than I am today? Would my values be better? This is a whole different life. As far as you can see, nothing. So it's a great tribute to those people living here to endure this, but they love it. I think my values wouldn't have changed, but 
I don't know that. Hi, my name is Avis McDowell. Welcome to Ace's Beauty Boutique. Come on in. Avis, this building looks like it's brand new. How long have you been here? I have been here, oh my goodness, five years. Five years. Are you from here? Uh, kind of. I'm from south of town. I grew up in Montana just a little bit. How did around here. How'd you decide to put this beauty parlor here? Um, because my kids, I was working in Williston and I wanted to get out of Williston. And so I decided where my kids were going to go to school, where I was going to build uh, my shop. And so... Uh, my kids started going to school here, and so I came up here. They were actually little when I came up here, and now they're in school. Hi, welcome to Treasured Stitches. I'm Lynette Eaton. How are you? Annette, I love your store. How long have you been here in Granora? Um, in Granora, it will be five years, July 1st of 2020. Are you from here? Um, originally grew up over in Plentywood. How did you decide to put your store here in Kenora? Um, I was doing it in my house for six years, and the owner of the building, who's also the mayor of the town, had talked me into it. He had asked me one day if I would consider coming to Kenora, and I said, oh, I don't know. And he kept asking me, and then finally I thought, what the heck, why not? So, so now here you, we are. Now you're a resident. Well, I was a resident before anyway, because we live out to the south of Zal. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Well, what is the store about? What do you do? What do you sell here? I do embroidery and screen printing and vinyl signs. So if you have a business logo or a retirement gift or a birthday gift where you're looking for somebody's name on it or a logo on it, I can do that. As long as it's not a copyrighted logo like the NFL or yes. big basketball teams, that sort of thing. And you do t-shirts too? Yes, I do. T-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets. Blankets, everything, even toilet paper. I embroider on toilet paper as well. Oh my goodness. Is there a web page where people can find you? Yep, treasuredstitches.net. And I'm also on Treasure Facebook. Treasuredstitches.net. Treasuredstitches.net. Oh, treasured, do it. Treasured, yep. T R E A S U R E D S T I T C H E S. Okay, that's a mouthful for me. It is. It's long. <laughs> where are you from? Renora, North Dakota. You were born here? Yep. I was born in the hospital here. Did you, uh, did you have a farm here or had a farm? Ten, ten miles north. Oh, near Alvin Quam's place then, near there? Yep, pretty close. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's three miles north. Of three, three miles north. So you've seen a lot of changes here in, in Denora because you were born here. Oh, yes. Um, what's going on now? I see major changes in the city. It looks like it's being rebuilt. No, now it's getting machinery are getting so big that it don't take long to farm. No, I suppose. <laughs> uh, are you still farming? Or you have family. No, my son has got the farm now. Okay, all right. Now, have all those years, did anything wild and crazy happen? Uh, well, we got oil wells around now. Okay, but before the oil well, it was just a quiet farming community, and the farms were all small. Yeah, yeah, they're all small. And then that's why you had a lot of people in town, because of so many farm family. How many members of your family? Well, how many members do you have? Have any children? Oh, yeah, I got three boys and one girl. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And, and, now, and the one son lives on the farm, and, and I got a daughter that lives in town here in Genora. Well, well, you got, you've got big family connections here then. Yeah. Did you ever have to go in the service? Oh, yes. For, for what? Up from 1951 to 55, Korean War. Oh, the Korean conflict. Oh, yeah, yeah. How much time did you spend in Korea? I didn't. I stayed in the United States, Texas, most of the time. You stayed where? In the States. How'd you luck out with that? You were in the Army and you stayed in the States? Air Force. Air Force? Yeah. Where were you based at? Laredo Air Force Base. Laredo, Texas. Wow. Well, well, sure. Okay. Now, of all, the, of all the changes here in farming, how about the oil business? Is that causing a farming problem? Or is it no, it didn't bother the farming, no. Okay. No. Uh, 
I didn't know yet. Well, this is what gets him. Yeah. Have you ever lived any place else temporary other than Kenora? No, just the four years I was in the service. It's the only place. Otherwise, it's the same well, place. Left, that, that's what you call a long-time residence. Yep. Uh, now, right now, right now, you're what, 91 years old? Um, I, I will be 92 in February. Okay, okay. So you've seen everything that's happened in this town, all the parties. Now, was is there more than one school reunion? Or just had one all school reunion? Oh, we, we've had quite a few uh, reunions here. Oh, all school reunion? Okay. No, well, schools get together too, you know, and then. Okay. What are you excited about now? Are you still working on that cemetery? Living here in Gonora. The changes, the oil, the, sh the town's growing, or? Well, I don't know half the people here anymore. There's new oh, people sure. moving in, so. Sure, it's a whole new generation. The people that come here to the Senior Citizen Center know everybody. Pardon? The people that come here to the Senior Citizen Center, they all know everybody. Oh yeah, oh yeah, sure, yeah. Are there any other events, events coming up in Gonora that you know about? Not that I know of, no. Okay. Well, tell me about this theater. I don't, I don't recall having a movie house here. The uh, movie theater was one of the first buildings in town. There's old pictures that show it as standing on, on Main Street since almost the beginning. It had silent movies in it, I was told. Yeah, yeah. Did you go to the, the silent movies at all? Oh, yeah. When we'd go to town Saturday nights. That's where Mother and Dad would do uh, grocery shopping and that. We'd go to the movie kids. <laughs> Wasn't there a roller skating rink at the time for the kids to roller skate around in? No, no I don't think we ever had, so, no. had a rink. Had one. Okay. Ice skating, no. but not roller rink, no. no. Well, I suppose like all farming communities, Saturday night's the big night. Oh, yeah. You go yeah. do things, and Sunday is the time when you put your Sunday best on. The word was putting your your best clothing on, was on Sunday. You call it just, it was called your Sunday best. Oh yeah, and go to church. And yeah, but you had your, your coat tie, you were dressed oh, yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't be dressed up during the rest of the week, so this was your no. opportunity yeah, right. to show off your haberdasher, <laughs> or whatever it's called. Yeah. Well, that's interesting to see, see that. That that movie came out in 1956, so I'm thinking this would have been... 50s, huh? Yeah. yeah. 50s, 60s. Yeah. Was there ever a drive-in movie theater here? No. Okay. What happened to the movie theater? Was was it up very long? Well, the movie theater operated till 63. Oh. And then it was converted to a six-lane bowling alley. Well, then I I was here in the 50s, so it must have been... Movie theater then. Yeah, yeah. it was a movie theater what, then. It turned into a bowling alley, and then what happened to it? Uh, five years later, or four years later, in 67, it burned down. The fire there. In the middle of the night. And so the building that's here now was built to replace it. Okay. Yeah. What's in that building now? Well, it started out as a bowling alley, then a grocery store. Oh, yes. And it's hopefully going to be a grocery store again. Barbara, thanks for taking time to talk to me today. There's a lot of things happening in Venora. You've been here for all your life. All my life, right. Uh, what do you think about the changes coming? All the new buildings and the new streets and the new plumbing and towns being rebuilt? I love that part, that they're once they get it done, our new buildings, our repairs, and I do. Well, when I go and see the different facilities, do you, even the public works, this is not really exciting, but here it is. It's a tremendous, tremendous shop and office and building just for public works here. And the fire department's incredible. Well, the fire department, my husband was a fireman for, or an ambulance driver for 33 years. Uh, Barry Olson, and then he was on the fire department that long too. So, and we lived, I used to run down and blow the siren every time. Uh, Back then, now it's all secret. You can't, uh, you can't let anybody know who went out in the ambulance now. Uh, well, beautiful ambulance building. Very. Equipment. We're very fortunate to have what with the facilities we have in uh, in town here. The ambulance service too. And this is because of the oil industry, or other other reasons besides. Yes, the oil. We get oil. We get taxes off the oil for here. I don't know how much longer that's going to last, though, with... But they're slowing things down. If things are, sl are slowed down, right. Yeah, it'll change in time. Over the years, 
Was there any specific event that created a lot of excitement in town? Besides the all-school reunion? Well, the all-school reunion, that's my top priority because I usually run, I'm the head of, or three, four of us are the head of the reunions and send all the letters out and with help of others. And, and the 100th reunion, that was a big one. We, we planned for five years for that. Wow. How many people turned out? I heard about a couple thousand. Many thousand, I don't know. Wow. I, I don't know how many thousand. It was, it was a busy, very wonderful event, yes. When was the last all-school reunion? Seven, eight, ten years ago? Uh, no, that was four years ago, in 16, in our hundredth. That's the all... Oh, I missed it, but I was on one where they had an Elvis Presley impersonator. When was that? Sandy. Oh, Sandy, uh, Sandy Olson did that one. She did the program. A lot of us were in the program. Uh, in the school, I'm in, yeah, at yeah. the school, it was. Uh, my daughters were in it. Uh, a lot of friends, a lot of classmates. Uh, gosh, I, I wish I would have looked that up. I can't remember what date that was. Well, I shot some video with Sandra's camera, but I can't find the tape. Oh, okay. Sandra may have it. I got some tapes from Val. I'll take a look at them. Okay. Because I want to get clips out of that reunion. That Valley. that was a good one. Yes, my daughter. I had. Both my daughters in there. Well, your daughter was in there too, Marvin. Too. You were too. Yeah, I was in it too as a dancer or something. I don't know. I think it was 20 years ago, yeah. I would say, at least. Okay. I'm losing track of time. Right. I don't, Y2K, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know what year that was when said I if I really could study it up, yeah, I would find out what it was, yeah. Well it goes to the Right, I've not have been here all your life. I was born on Main Street in the hospital that's uh, third block up on Main Street. And your folks were here because they had a farm. They had a farm south of Grenar, right. Yeah. At, at that time, there were a lot of small farms around. That's why oh, definitely, definitely. Lots of... And big farm families. And then they had big families and, and uh, small farms, and but you had your, well, your chickens, your milk cows, your, you brought your eggs and cream into town and eggs to the grocery store and cream to the depot because it was shipped out. I remember doing that with my folks, parents, yes. Now the train ended here. Yep. Why did the train come to Ganora? I noticed that there's a lot of decals around. This is a train town. Yeah, Great Northern. The, that's the word Ganora is made from several words that have to do with the railroad. Of the Great Northern Railroad. Right. right. I don't know, it just ended here. I think it was supposed to go on, wasn't it? I don't know, I... No, I never heard. Uh, if it, but it ended here, I don't know, and they used it for years, and then all of a sudden they took it out. I have no reason. Yeah, just hauling crops, probably grain and things like that? Oh, lots of grain cars, yeah. Okay. Well, and people, they had the little, they call it the little dinky, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. It, and I mean, the kids from college even would ride on it home off the, from Minot. Hop on this train? Would hop on that little train and, and uh, come home if they didn't have, you know, the girls didn't have cars. Yeah. Well, was it just a very small train or was it just Oh, yes, train? it was very, tra but the freight train, when they got that later on with the cars, it was more. Okay. So. Wow, this sounds, this sounds like an exciting time just to, just to get on that oh, little train and go someplace. And you have dances. And dances. Dance at the old hall down there and street dances. and Street dances. Yeah. Street dances. But that was common then? Oh, yeah. In just the like every, in every the Saturday would be a street dance? Oh, no. A uh, couple oh. times a year, I suppose, oh, okay. in the summertime. Special event. A special, yeah. Barbara, thank you very much for Okay, me. you're welcome. I want you to say your name and then spell it for me slowly. No? Yeah, no. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Oscar Quarney. O-S-C-A-R. Q-U-A-R-N-E. Oscar, thank you for taking the time to talk to me.
Well, you're a long... We haven't said much yet. So. No, well, we're going to get there. But you're a long-term <laughs> resident here. Were you born no. in Gonora? Yeah, I'm born here, yep. Did you ever leave, or did you always stay here? Service. Oh, no, I was here 40 years. Service. And then left. For the service? No. In between the 40 years, I was in the service. Which branch? Army. And that was for World War Two. Two. Did you get shipped any place in World War Two? You stayed yep. stateside. Yep, I was in Germany. Whoa, what year was that in? Forty-five. Just forty-five and forty-six. So it was was winding down then in forty-five. Was still yep, pretty hot. Yeah, winding down. Yeah. Whereabouts were you in? What kind of outfit? Were you in infantry, artillery, or what? Infantry. Yeah. Infantry. Yep. Oh yeah. Aye. Now, when you were in Germany, you got to Germany. From what, France or how'd you France, get? France. Yep. You went through France. Le Havre, France. And and that, that well, was that? After nine days on a boat. Nine days on a boat, you ended up in where in France? Le Havre. Le Havre. And then your whole outfit then moved inland? Yep, to Germany. Okay, did you know where you, whereabouts you were when you crossed into Germany? To hmm. Munich. Okay. Now, were things winding down, or was it still hot? Oh yeah, it was. It was done then. Well, then, then you were you were part of the occupation. Force? Yep. So how long did you stay in occupation? In '46. For for about a year then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and your total time in the service was what? Two years. Two years. You enlisted or drafted? On my 18th birthday, my draft notice was in the mail. That same day? Same day. Sounds like a setup. Well, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but someone out there didn't like you. You want well, to make sure you got that. I made sure I got it anyway. Okay, so you came back, <laughs> and when you f were finished with the army, you came back to Gonora then? Yeah. And that's because you had a family farm? Well, you know, yeah, family, yeah. Yeah, but we, we, My dad and his brother were in the implement business okay. and Ford cars. Oh, in town here? Yep. Okay, so they, they, the family didn't do farming, they were business well, combination. People. Okay, combination, okay. So that means you were a used car salesman? No, I never no. was a salesman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to run out the door so you wouldn't sell me a used car. Uh, now, that you've been in Gonorrhea all your life. Is there any particular... No, I haven't. No. You haven't? Wait a minute, oh. wait, you didn't say something you're not telling me. Well, you haven't asked. Well, that's a good answer. So where the heck were you after you got back from the Army? In 1967, moved to Williston. From here? Yeah. From Gunnar? Right. Okay, you jumped ship and went, <laughs> and went to Williston. Why? I was a... I had to have a job. What did you do in Williston? I was a parchment for an international harvester dealer. Yes, I know of international. Okay, then you came back here at some point. When was that? In, uh, <laughs> in, uh, I never did come back. We have a lady over here that's drinking too we, much. We've come back to Where? play, no, you don't need to take my picture. Well, yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, no, cameras. but he, 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 he has close ties here and we come back for senior citizens and American Legion and, and relatives and, uh, whatever, well, birthday parties. We say come back. Where are you living right now? Williston. Okay. I, yeah. No, no. no, she doesn't. I don't live in. This Wilson. is this is your husband. No, he's just my friend. Your friend, okay. I, I, just. I lose track. <laughs> Pal, buddy, okay. Uh, it, it, but Who am I, I live out in Dagmar, Montana, and I only lived in Grenora for three years when I was in high school. Who, who am I talking to? Joy Rasmussen. Joy. Right. Okay. My maiden name was Rusted. Well, I don't know any of the names from town here. That's no. just are my age. I'm 81. Uh -huh. Wow. So I don't I'll be know. 85. We'll move this camera back. No, I'll leave it, I'll leave it set the way it is. Hey, yeah, leave it there. Yeah, no, no. Um, uh, <laughs> well, now you're back. But one other thing he yeah. skipped here. Yeah. He, he and his brother also, for some years in the 50s, uh, ran the International Harvester here in town. I remember that in town. I came here in the 50s to work for my uncle. Only two years, though. So I don't know too much. Yeah, I, what's your name, by David the way? Kwan. Huh? David Kwan. David oh, Kwan. Alvin Kwan's okay. nephew. Um, well, now, now I don't you, know how many years you came did back you here to that? work as an international harvester here in Denora? No, no, no. 
He owned the international operation. He owned it. Well, that's during that thing, during that 46 to 60, when I was here, we had an implement dealer. Okay. You say 60s. What happened after that? I went they to Williston. It. They sold it. And I okay. Went to so, well, took everything with you, so to speak, and opened a business in Williston. So when did are you now? You're living where now? Williston. Still Williston. Okay. I don't know if you moved back or not. And you came here today because of our video, or just because you're senior citizen at dinner. Is that every day or once a week? Three times. A week. Three times. Okay. I didn't know that. I picked the right day then, I guess. Yeah. Oh, it's, a good, it's worth the drive. Well, been, where'd you come from? Bemidji, Minnesota. Oh. About a nine-hour drive for me. Oh. I do it in one day. But I, I didn't know that only three times. Uh, I have to go back tomorrow. Well, is there anything else I'm missing that happened that was exciting for you that happened in this town, of Kenora? I can tell you that during the boom down in the early 40s, Late 40s and 50s, you could buy seven different combines in Grenor. That they did. Well, you had a lot of farms. Yep. Now look what happened. How does one farm? I, I think you're to... taking pictures of me. And take pictures. Well, you're in there too, so don't 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 do this here. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. Well, at some you want to know those dealers? Who? I'll tell you the dealers. Go ahead. Case I H Case. And Gleaner Baldwin was under Corny Brothers, and they sold Ford cars. Massey Harris, Arvid Anderson, Oliver, Price Brothers. And I wonder how That's pretty good. I How many is that now? John Deere. John Deere, Carl Peterson. Ah, what a memory. Cockshot, Farmers Union. Minneapolis Moline. Easter Brothers. I didn't know there were that many tractor companies out there. I yep. thought it was Case and John Deere. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> well, there ain't any now. Here. Yeah, well, yeah, they're all gone. <laughs> okay, I should turn the camera here. Seven? Yeah, seven to eight. Okay. You're, you're, you're out of the picture now. I turn the camera. So if you want to scratch your ear or do something, you oh, know, okay. go ahead and do it. I just had to interrupt because I wanted you to know yeah. that he did run the International Harvester yeah. here for but I didn't know that that many dealers. That was interesting. I didn't have no idea. Yeah. Well, you never did. How long have you been in Gonora? You're going to bring it up today, right? Well, um, I went to high school here, which was like four years, and um, I came back in 98. Where, where were you born at? What town were you? I was born in uh, Williston. Okay. We lived five miles south of Hanks, which is a mixed yeah. big town. And how did you end up in the We had to go to high school. Yeah. Yeah. High school. Yeah, That's okay. the only high school. Yeah. We moved to we moved to the big town of Grenora to go to high school. Okay. Yep. Yep. And I enjoyed I enjoyed my high school years. They were wonderful. Now, what what did your parents do then when they were here in Grenora? Were they farm? Or well, uh, my dad got sick while we were first year we were here, so oh, dear. It wasn't that wasn't so good. No, he wasn't. And he. Well, you see all the changes coming to town. Do you have any particular anticipation of what's going to come next? With all, all these, all these I don't hold my changes. breath. I I I miss the hardware store yes. a lot. That was not a good thing to lose that. I missed the railroad. That's ridiculous. That's, we should have kept it, put it on to reserve. Are the tracks still on the ground or the tracks They're still? gone. They're all gone. Long gone. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that. Long gone, yeah. We used to, uh, we lived in Hanks, you know. My first, my first eight years of school were spent in Hanks. Okay. Wonderful little town. But we used to think Grenora was the it place to go and we would take the train. Usually the train run at night, but during the winter sometimes it would run during the day and all the kids in Hanks would get on the train and come up and and, and um, ride the train up to Grenora. Was there a car to get inside or just hang oh, on? Oh yes, oh no, a lovely car. With seats in it. Oh yes, 
very nice. So very train, nice. Train Not train used much, so they were pretty neat. Yeah. So the train, train engineer would stop just to pick up the kids. Oh, they stopped in Hanks anyway. Yeah. Okay. But we had to be down to that depot to catch it. Oh, yes. We had to be ready to get on. How did you get back then? Uh, uh, as soon as the train got up here and and delivered whatever they were delivering to Gonora and made the U-turn around the Y, we used to call it the Y, because the train stopped up here in Gonora. That was the end of the line. And, and as soon as it came back to go the other way, we had to be there to go down to Hanks. And I'd say maybe a half hour. Four to five minutes sometimes. Yeah. Oh, this. Before the... Took off the, yeah. Pull the whistle. Oh yes. So you knew you had to get down there. So we had to be down there. We, we'd come up to the drugstore and maybe, maybe... Is it a drugstore in Williston? No, I mean, no, the drugstore was here. You know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, it was wonderful. Didn't you'd get, walk in there and you'd smell magazines. She had all kinds of fresh new magazines there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, um, ice cream sundaes, uh, marshmallow and, and caramel were my favorite. Uh, it was and, wonderful. And that was, that was from the drugstore? That was 15 cents. Yeah, but, they, but you got that in the ice cream stand at the drugstore? Uh, we, we, they had uh, like about three little booths in the, in the drugstore. Three Just booths. And, and, and we'd go in there and we'd fill up those booths. And, oh, you're making me and, hungry. And then, and then we'd, have, we'd have, oh, they had, uh, they had root beer and out of a big barrel that they, you could see they were taking root beer. That was wonderful. Oh yeah, that was, that was the place to go. When we were a kid in Hanks, we'd come to Granora once in a while to the show, which was a big deal. The at, the Orpheum, show. at the Orpheum Theater. Yep. Yes. And, and, and after the show, our folks would take us up to the drugstore and that's when we'd get our goodies sometime too. Oh yeah, that was nice. It was lovely. Had a good childhood. Was there ever a little rink here? I don't a recall. A rink? Uh, a no, rink? a rink. We used to we used to go. Uh, we'd go out to uh, some lake, and I never knew where we were going because I didn't drive. So, and I don't know what lake it was, but we'd go to a lake that was frozen around here. Go ice skating. Yeah. Don't know which one it was. No, I don't need. I don't any know. particular exciting time that happened here that we burned the memory into you. Uh, oh, I got all kinds of memories. How I mean, long what? do you have? <laughs> Two minutes. How about the all school reunion? When, what year was that when they had Elvis Presley lookalikes? Oh, was that when Emily did her thing? I think Sandra Olson was involved in that. Oh, yeah. I, I okay. Okay. it was probably prior to my. I, I was out in California for a long time, and I couldn't okay. come back to I'll find out from Sandra. Reunion. Yeah, I don't Sandra know. would know the exact year. I can't remember. I got pictures of it okay. and everything, but I don't know. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell me before we put a wrap on things? Uh, yeah, let's see. I got lots well, you, of things. Do you I want to tell you what kids did back then. What did kids did do back then? I was Saturday here. Saturday night, Friday night. We went dancing. Yes. We went dancing. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. There was dances in Zoll on. Friday nights probably. Saturday nights was Medicine Lake maybe, and then and then Sunday nights was Brush Lake. Ooh. Sunday nights was a good night. That we good we loved to go to Brush Lake and dance. Yeah, we danced yeah. a lot. Sounds like the small towns was a fun place to grow up. It was wonderful. I I've never complained about my childhood. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed every little minute of it. Thank you for taking the time to uh, talk. Thank you for letting me talk. Okay. It was wonderful. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The little town that could, Granora, a small community in northwest North Dakota that has made the decision to redo its inner structure in a big way. Farm machinery from the past of over 50 years ago. And when you drive into town, bright, beautiful sign that can be seen for miles. Movies from the past reminding everybody there was a theater in town, which has been replaced by satellite, cable TV, and computers. The warriors of the past rebuilt the American Legion Hall and established a Veterans Memorial Park and a wall listing as veterans of the past. Kenora, a magical place regrowing out of the prairie with new people and those that lived in Kenora all their lives. 
the main street is changing. So hang on for a great ride.